All right, welcome back to the Double Play channel where I show you how you can put your money to work in two places at one time by leveraging the cash value of a maximum overfunded life insurance policy. Today, I'm gonna to stray a little bit from the Double Play theme to talk about emergency funds. And I think, and most financial advisors think that it's a good idea to have three to six months of your living expenses saved up in case of an emergency, in case you have to quit working in order to take care of a loved one or you lose your job. So one of the things with an emergency fund is that you need your money to be liquid and you also need it to be low risk. So liquid because you wanna be able to readily convert it into cash quickly and low risk because if you remember 2006, we don't, you know, what you don't want to have to try and sell assets when the market is down 40%, for example. So I am going to postulate that the best place to save up your emergency fund is in a high cash value, maximum overfunded life insurance policy. So if you wanna learn why I think that is and learn some more, some more of the advantages of doing it with a cash value life insurance policy, stick around after the intro and we'll get started. All right, thanks for sticking around. I'm Tom Rutkowski with Innovative Retirement Strategies, and this is the Double Play channel, where I show you how you can put your money to work in two places at one time by leveraging the cash value of a maximum overfunded life insurance policy. And I came up with the concept of the Double Play on my own many years ago, and I feel that it's so powerful that I really wanna share it with everybody. The goal of this channel is to be the best source on the internet for information on maximum overfunded life insurance policy. One of my goals is to give you the information that you need without ever talking to a life insurance agent to make the best decision possible so that you can maximize your use of the double play. And along the way, we're going to take care of all, all the misconceptions about life insurance. All right, so today we're gonna to be talking about emergency funds. And you have a lot of different options, things that you could put your money into. But again, I'm going to contend that the best place to put your money in an emergency fund is in a maximum overfunded cash value life insurance policy. And I'm going to do that by comparing and contrasting along the categories of liquidity, risk, and potential return. And we're going to see which one of the options that you have to choose from will result in the best choice for you. And I'm gonna show you some of the pros and cons of using life insurance. And then one last little trick that is pretty neat and you'll wanna stick around and, and definitely watch that towards the end. But before I can get started, I need to cover a little bit of housekeeping. So first and foremost, um, I am not gonna cover a lot of the life insurance fundamentals in this video. So I'm gonna put a link to the life insurance 101 presentation and video in the description down below. So go ahead and uh, get those if you need a little bit of background on life insurance. While you're down there, be sure to like and subscribe to this channel so that you're notified whenever I come out with new videos. Um, as I said, my goal is to be the best source of information on the internet regarding high cash value life insurance policies. So you won't wanna miss any of my content. Um, two, um, there is no advice in this presentation. This presentation is meant to be educational in nature. Uh, so there's no tax advice, no financial advice, no legal advice. And finally, the purpose of life insurance is for the death benefit protection. Any other benefit is purely ancillary. And I also wanted to mention that a link to download all of the slides and the presentation used in this video will be down in the description below. So be sure to check that out. All right, so let's get started. The goal of this presentation is to demonstrate that a maximum overfunded life insurance policy is the best place to save your emergency fund because it maximizes your return potential while maintaining liquidity and minimizing risk. So the first thing that I really wanna show you is this table. And what I'm showing you in this table are some of the common options that you can utilize for saving in a emergency fund. And I'm looking at everything with regard to risk, liquidity, and growth potential. And if we start over on the 
far right side. You know, the, the goal of an emergency fund is to have three to six months of your living expenses saved up so that in case anything happens, you lose your job, you have to care for a loved one, that you've got easily accessible money that you can access to pay bills. So typically we want to have that money on hand before we start investing. So the first category that I've got there is bonds. So most bonds I consider as investments and they don't have any place in an emergency fund. However, um, there are very short-term treasuries that with maturities ranging from three to six months, that might be a good fit for layering potentially with money that you don't need immediately, but you wanna get a decent return on it. So for the most part, I'm gonna throw bonds out. Um, from a risk perspective, it's, I would consider it medium. From a liquidity perspective, you might have transaction charges. And from a growth perspective, um, I'm gonna consider medium to be you know, not bank account interest, which would be low, and certainly not stock market and real estate investment in, investment interest, which would be high. So we're just going to call that medium. But as we move across, we've got savings, CDs, and money market. So the risk in a savings and checking account is very low. Those funds are federally guaranteed. They are very liquid because you can walk into the bank branch or go online and you can easily access your money. But the growth potential is low. You know, I went online yesterday to look at interest rates and what you could get and bank rates on, on savings accounts are below half a percent. Even, even short-term CDs are, are at or below one half percent. So savings and checkings, low risk, high liquidity, a good fit, but you know, low mediocre returns. CDs, on the other hand, um, very low risk, federally guaranteed, but very low liquidity, meaning you have, you're, you'll incur fees if you want to access your money prior to the maturity of those CDs. And from a growth perspective, um, they offer very little growth on top of what you could get in a traditional savings or checking, interest-bearing checking account. Money market funds are a little bit more liquid, um, so still very low risk. Um, high liquidity, but at the end of the day, um, very low mediocre returns. Now let's turn our attention over to cash value. Uh, from a risk perspective, these are the assets of a life insurance company. So very low risk, typically guaranteed to earn a 2 to 4% rate of return. Um, four, used to be 4% going to 2% in this year. From a liquidity perspective, um, very high. Um, all life insurance po policies allow for policy loans. And another thing that you can do is get a cash value line of credit, which would give you easy access to um, simply draw upon those funds in an emergency. So low risk, high liquidity, meets the, the basic requirements of an emergency fund. But where it really differs is in the growth potential. I would consider the growth potential of the cash value of a maximum overfunded policy to be medium. Again, that's considering, I'm, I'm considering low to be bank interest, high to be stock market and real estate. So this is typical bond market interest rates, so medium. So if we go across this table, you can clearly see that when you look at those options that meet the minimum requirements of, of low risk and high liquidity, um, cash value definitely meets that. But from a growth perspective, it is the most optimal with a medium rate of return. All right, so we know that life insurance has fees and expenses in it. But what I, one of the things I want you to understand is that in a properly designed maximum overfunded life insurance policy, you're gonna get about 85% of the premium dollars that you put into that policy going straight to the cash value. So you can understand that the load on the policy therefore is about 15%. So you're not gonna have access to 100% of the money, but there are other benefits of the life insurance. 
So let's take a look at this graph and just look at what this is going to look like from a pure financial perspective. And what I have shown here in blue, this is a hypothetical savings account, um, just a thousand dollars earning one half percent over a 10 year span. And even though the interest is growing and compounding, you can still see that it pretty much looks like a flat line. Now, the life insurance policy, under the, on the other hand, I'm assuming that this cash value is growing at 5.5% and that your $1,000 premium turns into about $850 of cash value. So lower than the $1,000 that you'd have available had you put your money in a bank, mark, a bank account. But the trade-off is that your money is growing at a 5.5% rate. So if we look out to about the fourth year, we can see that the growth of the cash value catches up to and surpasses where the money in the savings account would have been four and a half years later. So you really have to ask yourself, you know, are you willing to take that little bit of a shortfall in order to have the greater growth on the long term end? So you have to weigh the probability of having that emergency event occur versus not having it. I mean, one, one thing to keep in mind is like, if you're beginning from scratch and you've got no savings, you know, you're not going to be able to meet your requirements anyway. So you really have to look at the probability of, of you know, is that 85% really gonna make a difference? So, but the one thing I really want you to keep in mind here is this is going to look good longer term. But life insurance has a lot of other benefits that I want to get to that easily and completely make up for this shortfall that you're going to take on the cash value from the beginning. So let's take a look at those options. The first is the death benefit. And there is definitely value in making sure that your financial plan is completed in the event of an untimely death. You don't want to put a non-working spouse in dire financial straits. All right, the next advantage is a life insurance retirement plan. So once you catch up to or save up the three to six months of living expenses that you need, there, there's no reason to stop saving the money in the fund. You know, that, you know, had you put money into a different source, like a bank account, you know, any money you continue to save up after that is money that you're going to ultimately invest with. Well, depending on what you want to do with your investments, a life insurance retirement plan is a very practical and efficient way to save up retirement savings, to save up for retirement income. The key thing about a life insurance retirement plan is that the way that you get income from a life insurance policy is that you borrow against it. You don't physically withdraw it like you would if you had an IRA or 401k. You're borrowing against it. So what that means is your cash value still continues to grow and earn interest crediting even while you're taking loans for income. So those loans, they, they require interest payments. But instead of paying the interest, you're going to simply borrow the money from the insurance company to pay the interest on the policy. So you'll have an accruing loan balance but that loan balance is offset by the cash value of the life insurance policy. So this allows for income at a rate of 8% versus 4% for traditional investments. Um, and don't take my word for it, you know, pause the video here and go out and Google the 4% rule. And what you're going to find is that is the rule that most financial advisors use to determine the safe withdrawal rate for taking income from your savings. So the example that I always like to use is, you know, if you've got a million dollars in a 401k and you want to retire at age 65, the safe amount that you can take from your retirement from your retirement fund, your 401k, is about $40,000 a year, 40 44% of the million. Well, if your money is in an IRA or a 401k, you haven't paid your taxes yet. So if you're in a 25% tax bracket, for example, that means that once you pay the 10% $10,000 for the taxes, you're left with about $30,000 net out of the withdrawal that you made from your 401k. Now, 
Now, with life insurance, when you take a loan, that loan is coming to you tax-free because it's a loan. And the rule of thumb for a life insurance policy is that you borrow about 8% of the amount that you had starting at retirement age. So if you reach retirement age with the same million dollars in your in cash value in your policy, that means that you can get $80,000 a year tax-free. So 80,000 versus 30,000 from the same amount of savings. So what I want you to understand and take away is that a life insurance retirement plan can provide two to three times the income as other retirement assets. And, and clearly, even 85% of your premium dollars at 8% can generate more income than 100% of your money at premium dollars using the 4% rule. So from day one, despite all the fees and expenses, that 85% is capable of generating more income from that day forward. And the next advantage of a life insurance policy is that you can utilize the double play, which this channel is almost, almost entirely devoted to. Once you've saved up your three to six months of living expenses, you can just go on funding your policy and you can leverage that cash value to invest in anything that you are going to invest your money in anyway. And the beauty of the double play is that you're putting your money to work in two places at one time by leveraging the cash value of a maximum overfunded life insurance policy. So remember, the 85% the of your premium dollars that go to the cash value are still growing and earning and compounding even while you're taking loans against the policy to invest in real estate. All right, so let's look at an example of the double play. Actually, we're not gonna look at it, I'm just gonna tell you about it. If we assume that we had $100,000, and I'm gonna look at investing in the double play versus not the double play. So if you did not use the double play, if you had $100,000 and you invested it at 10% and you were in a 40% tax bracket, your $100,000 would make $10,000 during the year, but you'd have to write a check for $4,000 to the IRS to pay the taxes, assuming a 40% tax bracket, and that would leave you with $6,000. So $6,000 net on the $100,000 gives you a 6% net growth on your cash value or your, your investment cash. On the life insurance policy, if you had $100,000 of cash value, remember that cash value itself is growing at 5.5% despite any loans that you take against it. But if you invested at $100,000 at 10% interest, you'd finish up the year with the same $10,000. But instead of paying taxes on that $10,000 gain, the first thing you're gonna do is write a check to the bank to pay for the interest expense on the money that you borrowed. So if we assume that the borrowing rate is 4%, we're going to write a check to the bank for $4,000, leaving us with $6,000. And that $6,000 becomes our taxable income base. So in the 40% tax bracket on $6,000, we're going to write a check to the IRS for $2,400 leaving us with 3,600, I gotta do the math in my head. Um, 3,600 plus the 5,500 that the cash value did is clearly over $9,000 of gain between the life insurance policy's cash value and the outside investment that you made with it. So your net return on that same $100,000 is over 9%. So understanding that you know this example didn't include the fees and expenses but still would you rather have 85 percent of your money growing at nine percent versus having a hundred percent of your money growing at a net of six percent uh, to me that that's it's obvious that that's the way i want to go as long as i'm investing for a long term and, and most investments, I would hope, are you're looking at it with a long-term perspective. All right, lastly, I want to finish up with one little neat trick that you can do um, with a life insurance policy that you can't do with any other kind of emergency fund savings. And that is, you know, if you had to tap into your emergency fund, 
you would have spent that money and you'd have to ultimately replenish it. With a life insurance policy, remember, you're, you're accessing the cash value by utilizing a policy loan. So you're borrowing money from the insurance company to pay whatever emergency expenses you have. But you don't have to pay that money back. You know, that loan could stay on the books forever and it would just simply be paid off out of the death benefit upon your death. So it would reduce the death benefit by the amount of the loan, but it's not something that you have to pay for during your life. I mean, again, that, that's the advantage of using, utilizing a life insurance policy for this planning approach. But here's the neat thing. That loan that you have against the policy creates a liability or basically a hole in the cash value that can be filled back up again. So the, the beauty of this is that, you know, understanding any new money that we put into the life insurance policy, you, we lose about 15% in fees and expenses, right? When you pay off a loan, when you pay, write a check to the insurance company or the bank to pay down that loan, that money is going in with no fees and expenses. So you can, can instead of funding your policy, you could cap the policy and pay off the loan and you would get money into the policy quicker without that 15% haircut. So you have many, many different options here. You could continue to fund the policy. You know, maybe we're in the future and you're making more money at that time. So you could afford to pay both the premium on the policy and put some towards paying down that loan. Or you could cap the policy. When I say cap the policy, if you ever want to get to the point in a life insurance policy where you don't want to put any more premium into it, in the case of a whole life, we can do what's called a reduced paid up, which basically just lowers the death benefit to the absolute minimum. And just you have a paid up life insurance policy from that day forward. In the case of a, a universal life or indexed universal life policy, in, what we would do instead is lower the death benefit manually to the what's called minimum non-MEC. It's the lowest possible death benefit that, that you can have consistent with the amount of cash value that you have. And, and doing that will drop the fees on the policy down to about one quarter of 1% per year. So if you earn six, for example, you're gonna net five and three quarters. So once you get to that point, the, the fees on the policy are not the typical 15% that you have during the years that you're paying premium. So in any case, getting back to the one little neat trick, you have options. You could stop paying on the policy and then just move forward and replenish what you took out for those living expenses. And now you'd have a policy with that amount of cash value that's able to provide retirement income for you or you can leverage it for the double play. So, so wrapping up, what I showed you was that a life insurance policy, a cash value, a maximum overfunded high cash value life insurance policy is the best way to save for an emergency fund. And with assets that you put into an emergency fund, you wanna make sure that they are low risk, highly liquid, and you wanna have as best return as possible. And I believe that the life, maximum overfunded high cash value life insurance policy represents the best way to optimize on those criteria. So with that, I'm done with this video. I'd like to thank you for paying attention all this time. Um, if you are hungry for more information and you're not ready to talk to a life insurance agent yet, I recommend going out to Facebook and joining my double play group. There's a link to that group in the description down below. But the group is made up of members who are looking at the double play or utilizing the double play. So if you've got questions and you don't wanna to talk to a scary life insurance agent, you know, go out, go out to that forum and, and ask your questions there. There are plenty of people there who can answer your questions. Um, additionally, um, a link to this presentation, the slides that I used is in the description down below. Um, that'll take you to my website where you can access a blog post that covers this subject. You can access a recorded webinar that covers this subject and, and tons of other resources regarding life insurance in general and the double play. And, Again, be sure to like and subscribe so that you're notified whenever I come out with new videos. And if there's anything you want me to cover in future videos, 
send me a message. I'd be happy to include it in my list. Thanks for watching.